Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today I have a review for War for Cybertron Siege number 37, Deluxe Class Brunt. The first and so far only Decepticon weaponizer in the new line. For anyone unfamiliar, Brunt was the tank drone that came with the original Trypticon toy back in Generation 1. He's now receiving an update, and unlike the original toy, which did not have a robot mode, he has been gifted with, you know, a fully functional robot mode and just kind of a personality of his own. So like all my other reviews, we're going to take a look at the packaging, the instructions, get a look at Brunt himself. I'm going to see his different modes, look at his interactivity with other Siege figures, do a little bit of comparisons, and then uh, do some fun shots too, you know, some uh, side-by-sides with some old friends of his. And then, of course, at the end, I'll give my final thoughts on the toy and let you decide for yourself if he's worth adding to your collection. All right, Brunt's packaging is standard fare for a Siege Deluxe. All the usual brandings, his name, serial code here, his background. On this side, you have a nice big picture of Brunt tearing up some earth, looks like. And, of course, on this panel, there are hidden uh, Autobot letters that spell out Trypticon. So you can go ahead and put that code in on the Transformers website and lock Brunt on there for some, uh, some little goodies. On the back shows Brunt's robot tank modes, shows how he breaks apart in different weapons, and then shows him combined with Refractor, utilizing his uh, weaponizer abilities. Regular Siege artwork on the side, top and bottom, nothing special. Brunt's instructions have a nice black and white render of him on the front. Open him up. You get the steps to transform him from his robot mode, which is how he's packaged, to his tank mode. Shows his interactivity with the various smaller classes and their effects. Over here shows you how to disassemble him into his component pieces. Shows uh, two different loadouts for how to combine them with Refractor. You got a Demolition loadout and a Serpentine loadout. It's pretty cool. His bits and pieces all have their own official names. The large cannon formed by his lower legs there is called the TTC HP Oblivio Launcher. Not a big fan of the name, sounds kind of lame. The, uh, his cannon thing here is actually separated into three components. The main body there, which is his upper body, is the TTC AD Vortex Cannon. The thicker part of the barrel here it's called the TTC-CR Agonizer Blaster. And then the end, that orange bit, is the TTT-CMA Micro Electro Amplifier. And then this part right here, which is the turret slash shield, is just called the TTC-HD Turret Armor. Now, interestingly, his uh, Serpentine loadout comes with some component names of their own these big old arm things the uh, I guess lower part of the arm where the claws are it's called the TTC MD hydraulic mauler claw so that's actual claw bit and then kind of the base in the backpack is all called the TTC MFM proximity boost module so proximity boost right because you want to reach sure uh, so interesting you know Breaks the patterns a little bit in the way things are named and divided up, but very cool. Alright, here you have Brunt's tank mode. And very small looking, very simple. Has a good amount of articulation though. The cannon does move up and down, and the turret can do a full 360. So that's nice. They didn't skimp on that. Uh, this doesn't fire or anything, it's just cool looking. He has wheels under his treads. You can see a little bit of the robot head popping up there, but it's ambiguous enough to where it looks like it could just be like some sort of scanner or something. It's got this little like side cannon type thing on here. And yeah, not a lot to it. Much more articulated than the other weaponizer's vehicle modes. 
and it does a fantastic job of reproducing the original Brunt, which I happen to have right here, or at least the Platinum Edition version, more or less the same thing. And you can see they get the shape down perfectly, right? A much wider tread set in the front than in the back. Got this big old honking cannon with an orange tip. Get kind of the same shape here with this bit that protrudes out at the bottom. And um, yeah, I mean, they just, they kind of crushed it. Uh, New Brunt is obviously a much darker shade of purple than the original one. And as I've already mentioned, the original Brunt doesn't have a robot mode, it was just a tank drone. But it is funny because it does come apart uh, to form pieces of Trypticon City mode later. So I find that funny how they both break apart into little pieces. Alright, we're going to convert Brunt to his robot mode, which does require a good bit of disassembly. So the first thing you want to do is remove the cannon, like that. And then the turret, you're gonna pop off of his upper legs. Just plugs in with these five millimeter ports there. And you're gonna pull his arms off. Just really breaking them down to his component parts. And the 360 at the waist. These little handle peg things need to come out. They're kind of a pain to get out once you push them in. All right, well, that was kind of a pain. Anyway, so this little handle thing, I'm gonna flip that up, which is also kind of a pain in the butt to do. So two strikes against Brunt already. Transformation can be a bit of a chore, but you finally managed to kind of get that out. I'm gonna swing this part down, swing his head up, and kind of push that flush against his Abdomen there. All right, got the main body transformed. The cannon here, I'm gonna take apart completely. So you're moving this orange bit, the gray part, separate these, and then flip that in. And then you're gonna attach these to his upper legs. Just plug them on in, like so. All right, the arms. Transform these, you're gonna swing them down rotate and pull apart to get like two clicks. You can open his claws a little bit if you want to. Plug it in like that. Same thing here. Rotate. Plug that in. Complete the main body. Here. Spin his turret around per the instructions. Put this in right there. It's nice and flush. And then you're gonna give them kind of this little shoulder launcher thing. Just plug the orange tip right into the gray barrel there. And you just slap it up there. Where it's kind of just completely useless. So yeah, uh, this robot mode, it looks really cool, especially for a character that's never had one before. Um, if you're very into the IDW stuff, this might look familiar. His robot mode was based directly on what were called Centurion drones in one of the issues of the old 2005 IDW run of the comics. And he does a very good job of uh, recreating that look. The shoulder cannon thing, I think it's a little silly just because it can't, uh, if one has a hard time like being pushed all the way in and being straight because it gets in the way of this turret here. Oops. And also there's no way for it to like swing forward or anything like that to be useful. So you either have to remove it, have him hold it some other way, maybe on his arm, or just pretend it's like some sort of mortar or something. I don't know. So, you know. It's got style points, but functionally kind of useless. The robot mode itself has all the articulation come to expect. Head rotates, so it is a bit tight. Got your hinge and swivel shoulders, bicep swivel, single elbow, claws open and close. Yet. It's got full 360 waist rotation, 
and then swivel hips. It's got a, it's got kind of a thigh swivel, a little bit of a knee swivel too, though. It's not really meant to do that. Our regular hinge on the knees, and of course ankle tilt. So looks looks good, plays well, moves around very well, and just makes for a very kind of unique, interesting looking little robot. Very dangerous looking too. All right, we're gonna go ahead and separate Brunt into his component parts. And per the instructions, we're gonna start from tank mode just because it's easier that way. So the first thing you're gonna do, separate the parts of his cannon and remove the cannon itself like so. You're gonna take off his turret piece again. Separate that. Separate his top and bottom halves. With these, you're gonna bring his knees out again. Struggle with that yet again, because it's so much fun. All right, so once you struggle with those, get them out. Bend this part up. And yeah, you just kind of leave that off to the side. The arms, you're gonna separate from the upper body, like this. The arms, you're gonna wanna extend, swing, push back in, like that. Same thing here. Looking like this, set those off to the side. His upper body is going to stay mainly the same. I'm going to flip his handle out again. That's getting really old. All right, um, so yeah, just flip it to where it sticks straight up like that. I'm going to take his little gray barrel piece, plug it in here, like so. I'm going to take the orange tip, plug it in like so. Right that. Right now we're gonna take our deluxe refractor. See previous review. We're gonna go ahead and combine them with Brunt. So we're gonna take Brunt's little tank tread things, attach them to the bottoms of refractor's feet. Like that. You wanna to get to where these uh, pegs are on the outside. That's where it's supposed to go. That way best stands on top of these. All right, so you get that. The shield bit attaches to his forearm like this. I'm just kind of leave it. He holds on to the cannon with his, his other forearm. You can put it in his hand if you want to. But instructions have us put it in his forearm. Oh my god. Not again. This piece is not fun. Alright, so. His forearm's a little tight for this, so gotta kind of work it in there a bit. Hopefully without folding it in and having to pry it back open. All right, so after Titanic struggles, you'll finally get that in there, like so. Now you're gonna attach this bit to his back, so just plug it right into the hole in the middle of his back, like that, straighten it out, and then you technically attach this to either side, but uh, instructions have us do it here. So you just put the hole over that, move it around a little bit, and uh, do some posing. All right, and there you go. That's the demolition loadout. That's the first configuration we get for Brunt's weaponizer modes. Uh, pretty balanced looking. It's got the usual foot booster things going on that for some reason is a common thing with the weaponizers. It's got a shield, it's got an arm cannon, it's got this big old shoulder cannon. So overall, pretty cool. Pretty well balanced. Though, probably gonna be a little heavy to this side because everything. Yeah, it looks pretty neat. Definitely gives a lot of firepower and some defensive ability to his other Decepticon buddies. Now we're going to change everything around a bit. So go ahead, remove this. Take that off. The shield can stay where it's at. 
but everything else has to get detached. So go ahead and take this cannon off. Doesn't want to come out. All right, move the treads from his feet. Let's set refractor aside for a minute. All right, so we want to actually break his cannon apart. Flip that bit back in there. I'm going to take this off of the main body, like so. All right, I'm going to take this, straighten the pelvis back out, like so. Oops. Reconnect these two, kind of like you're putting them in tangling again. Make sure you leave this out for the transformation and also for your own sanity. All right, so you get that. Get some stuff. Bring refractor back out. I'm going to plug this new assembly into refractor's back. Like that. This big old backpack thing. All right, now that you got those, you want to kind of spread these out a little bit. You're going to take his feet, use these holes in the sides, and just plug them right in there. Like that. Okay. And then you're going to take his arms. You got to make sure his bits are facing the right way. We're going to plug them in. Stretch them out, pull, open up like that. Do the same thing on this side. Put it in, stretch, straighten, and bam. It's his big old back mounted claws. They're very articulated too, right? They bend multiple ways, they swivel, they do all kinds of stuff. And then uh, what was left of that, like cannon? Stick in his hand as a gun. And yeah, this is that serpentine configuration. And personally, I like this one more. Uh, just for its uniqueness. It's a little unwieldy looking. Uh, you'd think it makes him back heavy, but as long as you have the claws kind of looming over him, it balances out pretty well. Um, it just It's a little further out of the ordinary from how the other weaponizers do their things. And I can just think of all the creative ways this guy could fight with these just giant hulking claws coming off his back. So yeah, I think this one wins in my book. Even though it is a little weird. So yeah, those are the two weaponizer modes. Uh, last thing we're going to do before we get to the final thoughts is have a little bit of fun now with old Brunt and um, let him hang out with some of his buddies. So let's do that. Alright, I'm going to bust it out Trypticon in his base mode. As you can see right there. You got Brunt hanging out in his tank mode at the top. You got a little Necro slash Wipeout. And you got a Full Tilt over there just hanging out. Now, in the original Trypticon toy, Brunt's tank would disassemble and become parts of the city mode. Uh, that big old tower thing behind him was originally formed by the cannon. Uh, these bits right here used to be formed by Brunt's parts too. Uh, the new Brunt can't really combine with the base mode in any meaningful way. I mean, there are, you know, holes and posts that you can plug him into if you just want to have him be different parts, but it's not going to look the same as the old one. Uh, if anything, maybe you can, like, plug some parts in there. That might look cool. Replicate the uh, old satellite dishes. But it's okay. You know, uh, he is no different from the other weaponizers in that he kind of loses his original interactivity with his Titan partner. So it's nothing new. Nothing to be too disappointed about. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he really looks like he belongs here. His purple is a little bit darker than the rest of the set. Which again, nothing new. For some reason, they decided not to color match the weaponizers to their Titans. They're usually a bit darker, keeping in, I guess, you know, the theme with Siege being a pretty dark toy line. But it's close enough to where he definitely looks like he belongs here. So yeah, looks really cool like this. All right, here's a quick look at Brunt with his uh, old buddy Full Tilt. Together again at last. And these two look really, really great together. It's hard to tell that the purples don't really even match. Um, only downside is that this is where Siege's scale kind of rears its ugly head. As you
as you know, Siege has a consistent scale within the toy line, but is generally a good bit smaller than previous toy lines. So you see Brunt being almost, you know, a head shorter than Full Tilt. It's not the end of the world. He's not, you know, absolutely dwarfed by him, but it is kind of odd. Uh, the original Brunt was much larger than the original Full Tilt toy, and kind of rightfully so. One turns into a car, one turns into a tank. Uh, so, you know, a bit of a mismatch. Brunt, you would expect him to be a rather large, hulking, imposing figure. And then when he stood next to his partner in crime, he looks kind of small and helpless. So, not a deal breaker. I mean, you know, given the choice between seeing these two together like this or not at all, obviously, I'm happy he exists. All right, one more quick little gander at something before I wrap this up. All right, here he is. The feet of the mighty Titan himself. And again, he just really looks like he belongs here. Anybody that buys this and displays it with their Trypticon, I, you know, can't blame them in the least. Just kind of a perfect compliment to the character, to the Titan. So yeah, um, again, doesn't have any meaningful interaction though. You could break him in his weaponizer components and attach him to various parts of Trypticon for very cool effect. Kind of like the Legends comic did with Fort Max and Cog. But that's entirely up to you. So my final thoughts on this guy. Um, he, to me, is a mixed bag. The concept, the design behind him, everything is stellar. Uh, I do have an issue with one, he's really small. And normally Hasbro and Takara, you know, they argue that like, oh, well, you know, they're small because they're consistent scale. We go off the character sheets from the old cartoon, right? Uh, but Brunt wasn't in the old cartoon, at least not, you know, as a robot or anything. So there's no reason he couldn't have been bigger. I mean, he's very short, he's much smaller than full tilt much smaller than the original brunt toy you know and it's really jarring because the new trypticon is much larger than the old one so he is much smaller by comparison now uh, so i'm not crazy about that the pegs the three pegs the ones that connected his knees the ones that connect um right here and the front of his upper body they're a real nightmare to pull out once you fold them all the way in. I have to, you know, through a combination of, you know, using wedges and stuff to get them out. It's, I mean, it's an issue with a lot of different toys, but it's really bad with him. It caused a lot of frustration just doing this review. Uh, so hopefully that's just my copy. Maybe other copies have better tolerances. Let me just sticker peel off here. But that to me is a major hit. Uh, I still recommend getting this toy. He is really great as a display piece, as a companion to Trypticon. He's an awesome weaponizer for your Decepticons. He's pretty much all purple, so he'll match almost any of them in their color scheme. And he's just a lot of fun. And I imagine if you buy multiples, you can come up with some really interesting combinations. Make like some sort of super tank or something. Um, I really like the fact that his legs, like his, his feet, become the tank cannon for those really interesting the way they did that but uh yeah overall even though there are things i don't like about him the things i like about him outweigh those by quite a bit but that is just my opinion of him what do you think of brunt i'd love to see your comments down below if you did enjoy this review make sure to give it a thumbs up let youtube know that you do indeed like these videos that i make if you want to see more of my reviews or any of my other Transformers related content, make sure to hit this subscribe button as well as the notification bell to make sure you get a heads up whenever I put something new out. Thank you as always for joining me on this fun little look at the Weaponizer Brun. And with all that said, I will see you all next time.